Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben you here for another Legacy video, and today Michael H. asked me to brew a deck that would absolutely crush Turbo Muxus. And Michael, I'm not going to do that. Let me explain why, and then what we're going to do instead. So, if I just build a deck that is just absolutely tuned to beat one deck, and then I play it in a Legacy League, there's no way that we're just going to randomly get paired against goblins and actually show off what the deck is supposed to do. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to get a Goblins Expert on the other side of a call, and we're going to go ahead and play some decks that are supposed to be very good against Turbo Muxus, against Turbo Muxus, and see how these matchups feel, kind of look at the strengths and weaknesses of the deck. So I'm going to be calling in my friend Eli Goings. We'll get him on video in just a second here, but let's take a look at the couple of decks that I'm going to play. Deck one is the Mystic Forge slash the One Ring combo deck list. Um, this is something that just kind of has the potential to ignore what Goblins is doing. The One Ring can act as a fog effect, buying additional time, and this deck can go very, very fast. It's something that, you know, potentially just outpaces the Goblins deck, which is relatively rare. And Ensnaring Bridge can also be a pain in the butt if kind of the game drags on a little bit longer. Deck 2 is Omniscience. If we cast Show and Tell into Omniscience and then win the game on that same turn, this is a combo that can end the game as soon as turn 1. Again, this is something that can go under what Goblins is doing. And the specific build that, I'm cho that I've chosen also has the one ring. Hey, guess what Goblins doesn't like? It's attack steps getting fogged. So this specific version can draw a card with the one ring, and if we have Omniscience going, you can use Mind Over Matter to repeatedly untap the one ring, draw your deck, and then you can start, you know, untapping some lands to cast your spells, do the whole, like, show-and-tell Emra cool thing as well. Uh, so, we also have some free counter magic here in the form of Force of Will, which can stop critical cards like Namesticker Goblin from getting in. And the final deck that I'll be playing today is Stifle Knot. Doorkeeper Thrall is going to be an absolute kick in the teeth for a Turbo Muxus deck, as this is going to shut off things like Namesticker Goblin, as well as the endgame payoff of Muxus. This also can be done at, at instant speed because of Flash, so like you don't know if your opponent is holding up Source of Plowshares or Doorkeeper Thrall or, I don't know, a bunch of copies of Dress Down. Uh, this seems like it is going to be a very rough matchup for my opponent, and it's not exactly like they're going to be great at blocking 12-12 Tramplers that we sneak into play. And one thing that I've talked about a lot in beating like various Ancient Tomb decks is one of the best ways to win is stop the first thing that they do and then go after their mana production in the form of Wasteland. So this is what I'm going to be playing today to try to bully Eli. Let's get Eli on a call and let's talk goblins. All right, and we have our very special guest on camera now. Will you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about you? Hi, uh, I'm Eli, mostly known as Goblin Monkey One. Um, I have been a Goblins player for quite a long time, since about 2016, when I really started getting into Legacy and played a lot of Goblins then. And I've been, with some ex small exceptions, playing it ever since. Uh, I've been really pushing the deck to uh, competitive spheres for a while, and I've been really trying to angle towards that. And then since Obviously, Vile Goblins is the older deck, so I was I've been playing it for that that time. Uh, and then since uh, Namesticker Goblin came out on Magic Online, plus Broadside Bombardiers, Battlefire Goblin gets gets discovered. Um, that's been part of my kind of repertoire as well. I play both about even amounts, um, and trying to really push the deck and play it as well as I can. I'm really focused on trying to play. Uh, the best magic I can play. All right. So what are your feelings on the Turbo Muxus deck? 
So someone donated today to have me try and bully Turbo Muxus because they're they're just sick of the deck, you know. Is this a deck that's too good? Is this a top-tier legacy deck? You know, it has really gotten powered up in the last year or two. What are your thoughts as someone, like, really invested in the deck? Uh, I feel kind of strange saying this, but, uh, you know, as I've been sort of the Goblin's evangelist for most of my... Uh, magic playing career, but I also feel like Turbo Muxus is kind of overrated. <laughs> um, I, I think I think a lot of the decks that it absolutely bullies are a lot of the other non-blue decks. So a lot of people who like Ancient Tomb Gamers, if if you if you like casting Blood Moon, if you like casting uh, Seasoned Dungeoneer, you are going to have a really hard time with Goblins. Um, and especially Turbo Muxus. I think uh, also some of the some of the control decks uh, absolutely get demolished by it. There are others that are quite close. Um, Delver, it's not great against. And then there's certain combo decks which you are uh, playing today that I think are very good against it. So now the nice thing about Turbo Muxus is it can never get fully counted out of the matchup because it can literally kill you on turn one. Like it's possible. Um, and the build I play is sort of geared towards that. Like I, I think I play one of the more explosive versions of the deck because I do think of it as a combo deck. Um, I kind of think of Turbo Muxus as Glimpse Elves for the current year, um, just with a much better beatdown plan and often faster. Um, but it is it does have a lot of key weaknesses, and I think we will probably be seeing them today. <laughs> All right, so. Are there any major deck building choices going on right now? Or is the deck just like, you know, this is the 75 you play, you adjust a couple cards every week? Um, oh, sorry about that. Uh, there is a major kind of point in the Goblins community of playing Goblin Ringleader versus the One Ring. Um, or sometimes, you, it's actually more common to stuff like four One Rings and then two Ringleaders on top of it. Um, but they're also tending to play Chalice of the Void in the main deck, uh, skipping on Scrub Prospectors, Goblin War Chiefs. So they're giving up some explosivity for uh, protection in the form of Chalice slash Disruption. And then the One Ring they see as better uh, card draw as uh, compared to Ringleader. I'm pretty firmly on Ringleader. I actually wrote like a 1600 word essay on uh, my Patreon about like this sort of distinction and why I think Ringleader is just like much stronger uh, in the context of the shell. Um, but the, I mean, the number one point for me is that the ED on Muxus is like pretty bad. Like the, the thing about Turbo Muxus is that it's already not a great Muxus deck. Like you, your number of hits is a little dubious if you actually want big, big flips. Um, and then once you add eight non-creatures or eight non-goblins to your deck, it just gets kind of horrendous. Like the four chalice, four ring builds, the average goblin count off of the Muxus is like less than two. Um, so I I think Muxus is uh, something that you need to actually support in your deck, uh, and I don't like weakening it that way. Okay, last major question, I think, before we actually get into some matches here. How are you normally expecting to win the game? You know, are you expecting to win by throwing stuff with Broadside? Are you expecting to activate a Battlecry Goblin a bunch of times, get your stuff answered, eventually win with Muxus? What does the average Legacy game look like to you, or is there just a lot of variance? Mm, I think the... I think it's a game one game post... It's like a pre-board post-board distinction more than anything, where game one, I really have... It's a very linear deck, uh, game one especially. Um, used to do a lot of combat math, but it's, it is quite linear. Um, and so I do lean quite... It's like Muxus and Battlecry Goblin, I think, are the number one uh, winners uh, in game one. And Battlecry... Again, the reason that Muxus kills you is because you flip Battlecry or Warchief. So like that big haste swing is like what the game is about. You do have Rabble Masters in there, but I think of Rabble Master as like it's really good against Delver and Scam decks, but most of the time it's there to eat removal spells that would keep my combo from going off. Um, so if you really want to draw the analogy a little thin on the Glimselves thing, Rabble Master is Wirewood Symbiote, just 
don't think about it too hard, but that's where I'm going. <laughs> All right, fantastic. <laughs> So let's go ahead and jump into some matches here. So we've got the Goblin Expert versus me playing three decks that I maybe don't have much experience playing. And we'll kind of see if Eli can use all of his skill and knowledge to overcome some terrible matchups. Let's battle. All right. So I have a Crystal Vein. I can make two mana. I can play two keys and a Mox Opal. Have one mana. Nothing to do with it. We'll go ahead and mulligan this one. Uh, this hand can make a large amount of mana relatively quickly, but I think I'm just going to serum powder it. It's pretty free to do so. Let's put a ancient tomb back into the deck. Uh, this is turn one key, turn two the one ring, and go from there. Uh, on six, I am, I guess, comfortable keeping this. Uh, so we are uh, playing these games as if we don't know what deck the opponent is playing. However, I have just serum powdered my hand away. So uh, the jig is up. We'll manifold key and pass the turn. And Karn the Great Creator for Ensnaring Bridge is also a very powerful thing for me to do in this matchup. I'm going to have to figure out my whole mana situation first. We didn't open up on, like, a Grim Monolith that just really lets us pop off with Manifold Key. Um, we're just kind of hoping that the one ring can get me there. That ringleader? That is ringleader. So we are getting rabbled. Uh, this is fine. Uh, we can kind of fog... Ooh. I, I think I am just going to one ring still. So we'll go two... Four, one ring. Oh, let me uh, shut off the moto sounds that uh, you got for a second there. Apologies. All right, cool. I have more mana. And uh, we'll see if we can do cool one ring things. Now, Eli has the possibility of really making a powerful board that can get scary uh, very quickly. So this is five. Spirit Guide for six. Muxus is in play. Uh, okay, there's nothing to do with all of this name sticker goblin mana, thankfully. Uh, but I could just die to a Muxus attack next turn if I don't like fog or something. Uh, so this is scary. Uh, okay, that's not bad. So I guess we are fogging again. And just taking a redraw. So four mana. I'll play the one ring. I'm going to keep the one that lets me take an immediate redraw. Yaw. Uh, Lotus. I, I guess I can just hold the Lotus Petal. So I would like to be able to get to seven mana. Before this goblin army just kills me. Um, but, you know. Lethal is coming. All right, here we go. Two, four, five mana. I need some more mana. So let's manifold key, untap the one ring, and try to go deeper here. Let's draw some cards. Uh, here we go. So, yaw, yaw, yaw. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more mana to Karn in Snaring Bridge, and then my hand's not empty. So we're going deeper here. We're going to untap the one ring. Draw four. Uh, City of Traitors. Manifold key. Untap the one ring. Draw five. Uh, <laughs> Voltaic Key, we've already done our land drop. Uh, untap the One Ring. I need initial mana sources now. LED uh, does not get me there. I've done my land drop. We have fizzled, and the goblins are going to run us over, unfortunately. Yeah, e Eli says that was unexpected. We could not quite get to the mana that we needed. 
defense grid is not the biggest deal here. We can get a couple of dismembers to help with sticker goblins. I think I'm just going to board in another one ring and board in another key. All right, what am I looking at here? Uh, two mana, three mana, manifold key, up to four mana, just immediately Karn. Uh, yeah, we can, we can keep this. All right. Monolith, three mana, key, untap monolith, play monolith, play Karn, Karn minus, yes. I want to just get the bridge. Just get the bridge. It's sort of awkward that I boarded in my one ring here, actually. But the goal is now to get to five mana, drop Paradox Engine, and kind of go nuts. Oh, double Simeon Spirit Guide, Name Sticker Goblin is pretty gross. All right. So is this just going to be like a Battle Cry Goblin attempt to go wide here? It is Battle Cry Goblin, sure. Oh, there's something else. Chalice on zero. Absolutely. So, two mana. Manifold key. Untap Grim Monolith. So, up to four mana. Play Manifold key. Untap Grim Monolith. And get me to five mana. I can just get Ballista and just Ballista kill the Battlecry Goblin. Lose Karn, drag this game on. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's just take out the Battlecry Goblin. I don't want to just lose the game to that. Yeah, I don't mind this. And then we can kind of just win with whatever from here. It might take a little while to draw into something super good. Um, but this is just very, very strong. We'll just go ahead and do this. Um, this is a little weird, but I think it's fine. Like, we lose a couple life here to untap all of this stuff, and then I get to vomit the rest of my hand into play. So we will drop the ensnaring bridge, untap all this stuff, and then I'll just cast both of these. I don't need to be too picky about it. All right, so now we are safely hiding behind Ensnaring Bridge, and, you know, we'll draw one ring or Karn or whatever and go from here. Uh, Blood Moon is a thing. That means that I can't just, like, pivot with something like an Urza Saga. Um, but this is probably not the end of the world. Sure. My opponent can accumulate Goblin Tokens, uh, which may end up mattering later. Sure. So there's an uncastable card in hand, or a reactive card in hand. Uh, so there could be a Muxus chilling over there. A Muxus that leads into, um, like, a Goblin Trash Master could be scary. You know, we are very much just waiting, and I don't have any sort of protection for this ensnaring bridge. Sure. The Goblins stack up. I will draw a business spell eventually, I swear. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just uh, continuing to play draw go. And uh, I am not hitting win conditions. I'm glad a goblin matron has been used already. That's real nice. Uh, this is legendary. Uh, so we will just use this to uh, untap my stuff. <laughs> And I very much do need to uh, do this because uh, all these 1-1s one -ones that are stacking up will kill me if I ever leave a card in hand. Okay, there we go. I, I, I guess now that I have a business card, I will, uh, you know, do things right. You know, this is probably enough mana, to be honest. I, I don't think I'm going to optimize this. Uh, let's get rid of that. Sure. Um, mana is never going to be the limiting factor here. That's going to get countered. All right, so this Urza Saga will just be destroyed by Blood Moon. Um, let's just exile that. 
Uh, Eli says, this is the most non-deterministically but deterministically dead someone can be. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I found Karn. So I will go ahead and cast Karn. Yeah, there we, there we go. So I don't really have uh, much to do to change here. I maybe need to put a one ring back in the sideboard to wish for. That may have been me sideboarding in error. I, I just really don't want the defense grids, though. This only has three starting mana. I am very much not a fan of this here. I'm going to ship this. Uh, let's see. Two mana. Three mana. Play Basalt. Basalt. Voltaic Key. Uh, yeah, this is looking good. One of these do I want to keep? Let's keep the Karn. Bridge confirmed good. There's a Sticker Goblin under there. And a Chalice on one to stop my Voltaic Keys. Um, that's real good. However, Chalice on zero this specific time would have been better. So let's go... Um, do I need to play Basalt Monolith first for Metalcraft reasons? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's Basalt, 3, or Karn. You're going to Karn plus on my opponent's Chrome Box in hopes of keeping them off of mana. Then next turn, I can plus on Chalice, play Voltaic Key, untap Basalt Monolith, and hopefully the board is still mostly clear. Uh, get out of here. Two. Voltaic Key. Untap Basalt Monolith. Uh, this is some weird tension. I think I'm, I am going to go ahead and drop this. So. Rabble Master can poke a Karn. I think this is fine. Let's Karn minus. Yes. I think we'll just pick up the bridge this turn, given how good that was previously. So three, Voltaic Key, untap. Use that to Voltaic Key. Three, Voltaic Key, untap. Play the ensnaring bridge, and I can pass still making Urza Saga tokens, and then we can go ahead and Mycosynth Lattice next turn to kind of finish things off. Ooh. Okay. Uh, broadside, real good. Um, I have plenty of mana here. So let's go ahead and just make this construct token anyway. Let's go three. And untap this thing twice to make more mana. Um, so this is fine. So we will make constructs. Search for a thing. Grab a key. Untap Basalt. Play Urza Saga. Six. Karn minus. Yes. Mycosynth. Play. And now my opponent does not get to cast spells anymore, so that is presumably the end here. Now we can just Karn Plus on some mountains, cast a Mystic Forge. Yeah, and that's, that's good enough for my opponent. Uh, GG's. All right, so I have a show and tell, but show and telling in Mind Over Matter isn't really what you want to do, and I have no manipulation here. Um, even not knowing what my opponent is playing, I just don't really think this one is keepable. This second hand has no manipulation and also no show and tell. Uh, I'll go to five. So the five card hand has land, second land, show and tell, Atraxa, and then probably Force of Will is the last card. This one, this one will do. I'm just going to like check. I, I'm not a crazy person, right? Like there are cantrips in this deck. Oh no, there are no. Okay, understood. No wonder I don't see them. Well, all right. This is a weirder looking build than I thought it was. All right, my opponent is firing off a name sticker goblin. I think I'm going to try to let this resolve and hit the next thing that happens. 
I don't really want to force of will. Um, matrons. I probably stop matron. Uh, I don't love it though. See if I get punished by the battle cry goblin from hand. I don't. Okay, cool. So we got a little extra value out of our force of will. And I need one more land drop here. Ooh. If there's no mountain here, um, I am actually in really good shape. Uh, that's no mountain. You know, we could just get Muxist on next turn. Like, let's not forget that that is a thing that can happen. But hopefully we luck out a bit. Okay. Imprinting a broadside, which is a pretty good card. Um, Rabble Master, also good. I'll take some damage. Land. Not land. Okay, uh, this is scary. My Atraxa may not end up being good enough anymore. So, what, I'm taking 7, 8, 9 damage here, going to 5? Oh no, there's more. Uh, yeah. I can't really pitch Atraxa or Show and Tell here. I think I just have to let that resolve. It just feels terrible. Uh, yeah, no, we, we did a whole lot of nothing. We mulliganed a couple of times, uh, but it was no good. We got run over. Uh, GG. Yeah, I did not realize we were not a cantrip deck when I downloaded this deck list. Ugh. Uh, Dismembers, solid. Graftigger's Cage, playable. Veil of Summer coming out. Probably reasonably go down a copy of Mind Over Matter or two. I want the Dismembers... I want two of these. Every blue card that I pull from my deck is a card, like one fewer card that pitches to Force of Will. All right. Let's see here. Like Chrome Mox, Imprint, Atraxa. Do the One Ring? Sure. Cast. Atraxa's underneath. And let's do this thing. Draw my card immediately. And I just kind of assume that the One Ring will get us somewhere meaningful. Hopefully I'm right. All right, we got Chalice on zero, so my artifact mana becomes worse. Skirk? It is Skirk. Sure. Uh, I am set up to take a fair amount of damage here. Uh, let's play Island, pass turn, all Lorien revealed, land cycle, end of turn. I can't Chrome Mox, Omniscience, and then Lorien Revealed because of the Chalice on Zero. Okay. Damage report. All the damage. Uh-huh. Uh, and this does give haste. This is a perfectly reasonable time to just double activate. Oh, this is not good. So in case you haven't witnessed... Oh, and a Spirit Guide. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cycle. Pick up a drop. Take infinite damage, basically. I wonder if I'm dead to my own one ring. Sure. I could just be dead in the combat step. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah. So sacking the one one goblins ends up producing more damage here. And I am dead. We got rolled fast. All right. I've kept my hand here. Uh, we have pretty good stuff, honestly. Like, we have a Stifle for a turn one Sticker Goblin. I have turn two Doorkeeper Thrall into turn three Dreadnought. Like, and Wasteland as a follow-up after I do that. Um, this is quite good. Um, I, you know, honestly, no. <laughs> All right, uh, we have potentially taken our opponent off of red mana for turn one. Oh, am I getting punished for getting greedy? No. That is not stifleable. Uh, sure. So, Doorkeeper Thrall can just die to broadside. So, that probably just means that we're doing this. And just producing our 12-12 and saying, like, can you beat this? I can Wasteland this Ancient Tomb in a minute. I can Brazen Borrower something out of play. Doorkeeper Thrall is still on the table. Okay, yeah, we just... We did the thing. Uh, what an incredibly high-paced match here. Hydroblast, great. 
Containment Priest, uh, Actively Good. Ray of Revelation blows up enchantments, right? Yeah. Um, I, like, could do something like that as well. My cards are just good. I'm not sure what I don't want. Um, that's, I guess, a good problem. Days, maybe? Just classic trim days on the draw behavior. Keep as many ways as possible in the deck to actually produce the 2020 and the dress downs are relevant versus sticker goblins and stuff. I maybe want the force of negation when I'm on the draw, but it doesn't counter a lot of important things. Like, it's chalice on one in particular that it hits. This does not interact with chalice on one, but is like very reasonable versus a creature based start. I think I'm going to keep it. And hope that I don't get Force of Will checked. The play draw difference here is pretty big. Three mana. Oh, it's a Blood Moon. Yeah, this is uh, this is what I was talking about. All right, that has occurred. Uh, we may just get got here. Three mana. Chalice on one. Yep. Life's bad. Life's real bad. And now the threat happens. Yeah, I'm gonna die pretty quickly here. Draw like Lorien revealed. I think I get one more draw step. I think if I miss the next draw step, I'm just not live anymore. Oh no. Not the absolute high roll. Uh but that seems like it's enough to kill me. So three uh yeah, this is awful. You stack this so the extra damage comes through. I am at one. God rolled. So I have only basic island. How many Lorien revealed? Oh, I don't have Lorien revealed. That was last round. So I can reconsider days and force of negation when I am on the play. They do more. Go one dress down out for a force of negation, maybe. Maybe a brazen borrower out for a days like ever so slightly increase my counter spell density. Uh so this is turn one, tapped land, turn two, twelve twelve. Uh sometimes I just lose. I guess I can look for fort like force of will and land or something, but like I'm I'm just going to do this. I don't need that. If I just get chaliced on one, though, I do. Uh, rough. That's most of my hand. Yikes. All right. Uh, pass turn. I've got end of turn island into dress down. Uh, yeah. Force will not doing me much good here. Uh, we're just purely doing this as a cantrip here. Uh, Uro's fine if I hit another land, uh, which I did. We need drop to make that happen. So this is just a 6-6 in play because of our draw down. So that was pretty ideal as far as cards to draw go. Uh, we'll see if we just get outpowered by, you know, a broadside or whatever. It is ringleader. Finding another ringleader. Uh, all right, we have just a couple of cards that are not currently usable oh my god seven one drops all right the chump block is happening to protect life totals here this is where i want those like containment priest doorkeeper throw brazen borrower type cards this list is like surprisingly soft to chalice yeah i don't have shit for interaction <laughs> it was seven one drops oh my god uh i think i'm dead I think Battlecry Goblin activates and like it's all over. So the other sticker goblin comes down as well as a couple other creatures here. And now the Battlecry Goblin can activate. And we're going to go from 21 to negative 27. All right. So you remember in like round one or round two when I shut off the moto sounds because I realized those were on? Yeah, I forgot to swap things back when I went to record the outro with Eli. So I'm going to try to replicate some of the information that we passed on in the outro. My bad. Rookie mistake on this one. One of the things that surprised both of us was just exactly how fast this matchup ended up being. 
Like I imagine that this video probably start to finish will end up being like 45 minutes total or, or something like that. I think we recorded the whole thing in an hour and some change. The matchups went blisteringly fast and for some of those rounds, I don't know that that's necessarily going to be the norm, uh, especially against the Stifle Knot deck, which in theory should be incredibly interactive. We both thought that the Stifle matchup on paper was going to be much worse than that, and I just kind of got got by Chalice of the Void um, in kind of seeing those games play out and realizing how much worse I was against Chalice of the Void than I thought I was. Uh, I probably should have sideboarded a little differently and maybe even considered mulliganing differently. Um, Eli joked that he just boarded into Moon Prison rather than actually being on Goblins in that last matchup. And it, it was those sort of sideboard stompy elements that really came in clutch in locking out that game. And we realized that a combination of multiple lock pieces can actually establish a hard lock as my deck only had one basic land. I believe it was one basic island. So I think once we're at the point where I get mooned and there is a chalice on one, it is like incredibly, incredibly difficult for me to actually win the game. And if that's the case, then some of the things like Force of Will and Force of Negation that I maybe didn't rate as highly as I otherwise might have become much more important. One of the other things that we talked a lot about how was even if a matchup is bad, you just can't count out Turbo Muxus. The deck has incredibly powerful openers that threaten to keep pace or even outspeed good combo starts. And like the, the matches were, were nail biters in many ways, where a turn cycle in either direction changes the outcome of the match. And I, th I think I won the, the artifact round. It's been a couple of days since I recorded the actual matches. But the margins were tight, and some of the one ring lines uh, were definitely a little bit scary, even though they did provide a fog aspect. And I regret that the original audio isn't here because one of the, the kind of final questions I asked Eli was that, hey, if something got printed for goblins, what would you what would you want it to be? And he joked that he would like to see Trinisphere on a goblin with the flavor text idea that like everything costs three. He sells everything for three. And I thought that was very funny. Tutorable Trinisphere on a on a body when Watsy. They'll never do that. They shouldn't do that. Um, but generally speaking, uh, in more seriousness, we then talked about the Turbo Moxus deck and the fact that it doesn't really need a lot in terms of cards. Like, it's hard to print better things than what are in the deck. There's a little bit of frustration around Goblin Rabble Master as the forcing to attack can be very awkward against Shadow Spear and other life-linking things like Triumph of St. Catherine. But Legion War Boss isn't exactly wonderful either. That's still forcing an attack, just not on all of your stuff. So maybe it's actually the generic aggressive red slot that needs an upgrade, or maybe not needs an upgrade, but could be upgraded reasonably with new printings. Whereas some of the other things like Muxus and Name Sticker Goblin, you know, we're probably not getting better versions of those ever. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and plug Eli's Patreon and other resources. I will link those down below. If you are a Goblins player, be that the Aether Vial variety or the Turbo Muxus variety, Eli has been doing great stuff for the Goblins community for a long time, and I think it will be worth your money to support him every month. He is working on completely redoing the Goblins primer. Um, the previous one I think is from like 2022 or something like that. It's a little outdated at this point. So he, he is in process of kind of ramping that up and redoing that. So check out Eli's stuff down below if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And if you decide you need some goblins, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU while you're at it to save a little bit on your order. All right, see ya.